you know, there's been a lot of talk in recent weeks about the deep state. Steve Bannon has been using the term. Uh, people have been using the term to describe the source of many of the leaks uh, against the Trump administration, but the term wasn't invented recently. I used it myself recently in social media and was quote unquote informed by somebody that that's just a new meme that was invented on the internet to protect Donald Trump. It's not a new meme, it's an old idea. In fact, our next guest has written a book about it. He's been on the program before. Mike Lofgren spent, I believe it is uh, 28 years on Capitol Hill, working for Congress, uh, mostly on the Republican side. He uh, saw the light, moved on from there, wrote several books, including The Party is Over, and his uh, more, more recent book, The Deep State, The Fall of the Constitution, and The Rise of a Shadow Government. So first of all, Mike, thanks for coming back on the program. Good to be here. Secondly, what do you make? You've heard the talk, uh, the banter back and forth, or the, the 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 use of the term deep state by Steve Bannon, the, the denial that such a thing exists, as some people have insisted on. What do you make of the reemergence of this as a term in our discourse? Well, uh, in one sense, it's gratifying as an author of a, a book of that title. On the other hand, it never ceases to amaze me uh, on the one hand, you have sort of the Alex Jones uh, frenetic ranters of the full moon uh, alt-right uh, saying that it is this deep, dark cabal that is victimizing those poor snowflakes, those poor, innocent snowflakes, Donald Trump and General Mike Flynn. Uh, on the other hand, you have more establishmentarian uh, commentators like David Remnick uh, in the New Yorker or Mark Ambender in the Washington Post saying, this is ridiculous because the deep state doesn't exist. There's no such thing. Well, I'm going to take a little bit of an intermediate position. Um, the deep state is simply uh, the emergence and the culmination of illiberal elements and tendencies in our supposedly liberal democracy, such things as a militarized foreign policy, uh, entrenched wealth inequality, and pervasive domestic surveillance. Uh, I think anyone from the center left to the center right would agree that those have been problems over the last 15 or 20 years, if not longer. And I um, think if- however. If I to get to the, the point of what Bannon and all the White House trolls are saying, they're just trying to come up with a semi-plausible excuse that will resonate with their base, who has already been uh, sort of conditioned by the paranoid wing uh, of the Alex Joneses and so forth, to believe in this sort of thing. Uh, if you actually look at the evidence General Flynn was done in by his own malfeasance and his own misleading of people. Um, he should not have been talking uh, to a representative of a foreign government until after noon on January 20th. Before that time, the incumbent president and his team are the only voice that speaks for the United States. Now, I don't think he broke the law doing that, but he misled people uh, that he did do it. And he even misled the vice president of the United States, the second highest official, who then went out on national TV uh, and repeated the lie. And that was the rationale the White House initially gave for Flynn's firing. But as usual with uh, uh, the Trump administration, uh, they come up with all kinds of bad faith uh, rationales ex post facto to take themselves off the hook for their bad judgment in choosing General Flynn. See, here's here's where the problem comes in for me. Uh, a, a perfectly uh, valid and important idea can be discredited just by association with these folks and called a conspiracy theory and so on. I, someone in history, it might have been Disraeli, uh, talked about a 
conspiracies of shared values where people had the same common interests, common values, and so they worked together uh, not because they had a secret printed plan somewhere or blueprint, but because they wanted the same things, they knew each other, they associated, so they worked for those together. Is that kind of what the deep state is? Uh, that's more or less what it is. Uh, in fact, I'd say that's exactly what it is. These things aren't deep cabals uh, hatched in the dark of night. Um, what they really are um, is things going on in plain sight. Uh, the, the main actors, we know their names. It's just that most people don't connect the dots because the corporate media uh, in general is not really interested in connecting the dots. Even something like uh, the crash of 2008, which was the biggest uh, financial collapse in 80 years, uh, do you think they're more interested in showing a documentary about following the money and who at J.P. Morgan Chase or Lehman Brothers was involved in this and the fact that they, they might still be sitting in their corner offices? Uh, and how this ripples down to foreclosures, or would they be more interested in some music video by Beyonce, or you know some controversy about Tom Brady deflating a football, or and Anthony Partly our fault, or, 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 or Anthony Weiner's sex tape, or what have you, uh, sex tweets, or whatever. But um, well, let me ask you this then. Um, you will probably disagree with this. I succumb to the temptations of social media sometimes and give flippant answers. But I think one of the answers I gave on the question uh, of the deep state was I said, if the phrase deep state makes you uncomfortable, try military industrial complex uh, that was coined by Dwight D. Eisenhower. I don't think they're identical, but is there some similarity relationship between the two? Uh, if a rock ribbed uh, Kansas Republican like uh, Dwight David Eisenhower could come up with the concept of the military industrial complex uh, and a, a sort of disastrous rise of misplaced power. Um, all those decades ago, um, then it shouldn't be considered something way out there like belief in UFOs or something. Um, the military industrial complex is certainly a core part of the deep state, uh, but there are others. Uh, Wall Street is one. That's why I talked about the crash of 2008. Um, their strategies are remarkably similar. Um, the military industrial complex uh, made out very well from the disaster of Iraq, but Americans paid the price in blood and in treasure. In other words, they privatized the profits and they socialized the losses. Uh, Wall Street did the same thing in the mortgage bubble. They privatized all those profits and they socialized the losses to the rest of us. Uh, and this sort of privatization is a key factor in the deep state. Uh, of basically breaking up the notion of the state or government as an instrument for the common good and the public trust and privatizing everything to unaccountable corporations who make money off public flows of funds. And I, you know, that, that fits into uh, the next notion I had very well, Mike Lofgren, which is I've felt for a while that one of the characteristics of what you uh, and others have described as the deep state, one of the indicators of it is if a policy or a practice is embraced by the leadership of both parties, there's a very high uh, probability that it reflects the interests of this, this affinity group that could be called the deep state. So for example, national security policies, enormous spending on the military budget, regardless of external wor world circumstances, refusal to prosecute uh, criminal bankers, uh, even when there is a mountain of evidence proving their guilt. Uh, these are practices that have been embraced by uh, leaders of both parties, in the, certainly in the past. 
and uh, that could change in the future. But to me, each of all of those bipartisan, and I'm not condemning any everything that's done by both parties, but 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 these are uh, deep state policies, you could call them, and practices that have been embraced by leaders of both parties. Is that uh, is that a worthwhile line of thought from your point of view? Well, certainly is. Uh, professors Gillens and Page of uh, Princeton and Northwestern uh, studied thousands of House and Senate votes over the last several decades and correlated them with the state of public opinion as near as they could determine it from polling at the time. And they found that whatever elite opinion wanted, that was what uh, the House and the Senate voted for and supported. Uh, what the public actually wanted at the time was irrelevant. They only voted for what the public wanted when in those occasions that it happened to overlap with what the elites wanted. So I'd say your, your uh, thesis is bang on. So in the last election, and here I'm running into funny territory, uh, for myself, Mike Lofgren, because I, I have a very, uh, let's, let us say, negative opinion of Donald Trump and his team. But in the last election, you had uh, the national security establishment, uh, both Democratic and Republican, uh, uniformly supported Hillary Clinton's candidacy, opposed Donald Trump. Donald Trump became president. We started seeing these tactical leaks, uh, leaks, excuse me, uh, from inside the national security system somewhere on issues like Mike Flynn. Is this a reflection that that establishment, national security establishment, in your view, is this is this a reflection that that establishment continues to oppose Trump? Well, uh, certainly they and everyone in corporate America tended to line up behind Hillary Clinton. Um, there was something about Trump's just over-the-top vulgarity and goatishness uh, that embarrassed them because these people consider themselves uh, to be prof calm professionals. Uh, nevertheless, you will see so many Goldman Sachs personnel uh, on his economic team. He surrounds himself in the cabinet with generals in uh, hy hypothetically civilian cabinet positions. He's... Uh, uh, proposing a 10% increase in the Pentagon's already enormous budget. Um, his cabinet is filled uh, with so many billionaires, it made George W. Bush's cabinet look like a Bolshevik workers' council. So somehow I think uh, the bulk of the national security establishment and Wall Street is reconciling itself with Donald Trump, because basically he was just smart enough to read the mood of the country, uh, the whole populist revolt against the elites. But his was a totally fake populism. It's a thin veneer uh, behind a big corporate grab. Yeah, and I've been, you know, uh, I've been a little concerned about Goldman Sachs. Now that everybody's working for Donald Trump, I'm wondering who's, uh, I guess, the guy who waters the plants is in charge now. Um, unfortunately, I guess we're going to have to leave it there. But Mike Lofgren, uh, author of the book, The Deep State, and uh, expert on the topic of, of uh of government policies and government uh, uniformity of thought at certain times. Uh, thank you for writing the book and thank you for coming on the program. It was good to be here.